Hello, it's Mike and Rainbow again, and we're going to talk about Dugway Proving Grounds and our experiences we had when we lived in Utah there. So anyways, I'm going to give you a, I'll start out and I'll give you a little bit of a background uh, about Dugway and, uh, and some of the things around there, some of the things that have some uh, meaning to our experiences when we did three, I think we did three trips out there, correct? Two or three. three. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll talk about each one of them to some extent. And I'll just start off by giving a little background. So anyways, the Dugway Proving Ground is a, a U.S. Um, uh, Army facility, uh, which was established in 1942. And it was uh, to test biological and chemical weapons. And it's uh, about 85 miles southwest of uh, Salt Lake City. So it's pretty close to Salt Lake City. And it's, uh, it's actually houses the Utah Test and Training Range, uh, which actually forms the largest overland uh, uh, special use airspace in the United States, which is pretty interesting. Um, so anyways, uh, it's like 800,000 acres, square acres, and it's about the size of Rhode Island. And it has a population of about uh, 800 people. And then it doubles or triples during the workday when people come in from Salt Lake City or other communities around and work there on the proving grounds. So anyways, one of the interesting things, and we'll talk about this a little bit later in our own experiences, the base actually is intersected by something called the Transcontinental Highway, which passes through the proving grounds. Now, the part that passes through the proving grounds basically is private, so you can't really drive on it, that part. But you are able to, uh, to actually come into that area using that, and Rainbow and I use that to escape one time. So we'll talk about that later. Um, anyways, the name, I, I, you know, I just want to say this because I thought it was interesting. The name Dugway is, is, comes from, it goes back during the days when the pioneers were coming out. The word dugway uh, is a technique, basically means a technique of digging a trench into a hillside to create a flat surface along which a wagon can travel. So apparently when they were coming out here in those areas, they had a, there's, this is a real hilly area. There's mountains and hills. Mm -hmm. They had to cut out these kind of flat areas so that the wagon train uh, basically go through there. And I'm sure that's what happened. There's a pass where this Lincoln, uh, highway goes through and i'm sure that's what they had to do they get their wagons up and through there so anyways moving on so a little more of the history um on the base there was also something called michael air field uh which is actually part of it and most everything on this base of course is basically top secret and you'll see that there's fences all around it with all kinds of really serious warnings if you take photographs of it and we'll talk about that a little later also, <laughs> because Rainbow violated the situation. Well, see, but oh. they're listening. Oh, okay. <laughs> they're getting me in trouble. No, it doesn't matter if the phone that I took the, the pictures with is broken. It's and broken. So we the destroyed the phone. Photos are not, yeah, done. Done. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Leave us alone. <laughs> so anyways, one of the things that on the base they actually have is pretty, pretty incredible. And we didn't visually see this, but I've seen pictures of it. And some friends of mine who lived in Utah have actually seen these. They actually built some villages. They built a Japanese, uh, uh, they call it Empire Homes, uh, House Islands, kind of they built there. And they also built a Nazi, uh, Germany Nazi type village, which they used to do all their experiments and bombing runs and all kinds of really weird stuff. So mm -hmm. that was also on the base. And that's kind of behind the base. Um, and then uh, the Rangers also used it uh, in the 80s and the 90s, the, the Army Rangers to do their uh, desert training for Afghanistan and, and Iraq uh, warfare. Um, also in uh, September 8th and uh, uh, September 8th, 2004, NASA actually landed a spacecraft there. Um, and the reason they wanted to land it is they were testing some things I think this is a genesis, and this is probably something that they were talking about either eventually going to the moon or, or Mars or something. And, and the reason they wanted to, this consistency of this kind of, it's called the Great Salt Lake Desert area, 
is that it's like talcum powder when you land. And that was very similar to what's on the moon. So that was one of the reasons they went, went there and, and did this. And then in, in uh, 2011, they had an incident. Uh, they're a lockdown incident where they believe that um, uh, VX uh, actually uh, escaped and they had evacuated about 1,500 people out of the base until they figured it out. And I'll talk about that later when I talk about a friend that actually worked there and what he actually found out happened. Um, also on the base, they have a, what they call a high resolution uh, fly's eye cosmic rays detector, which uh, is used to uh, watch out for things coming from the sun, which is, I didn't know about that, but- uh, We I think th they might've taken a picture of it. Right, right. No, that, that's the other thing. That's the leap. The oh, the leap, leap. okay. Leap. All right. This is just an actual, like a detector that checks out stuff coming from the sun. Um, and of course, they they uh, they had they actually worked on large quantities of uh, not only nerve gas but anthrax. Uh, one of the th problems they had was they uh, they had what they call the sheep kill incident, which was uh, actually the incident happened about thirty miles uh, south of Dugway, but it was also it was caused. Uh, they're basically they're saying that it was caused by them dropping some uh, uh, VX because they would drop VX and they drop spores. I think it was accidentally though. It was what? Accidentally. Ex well, it was accidentally. They didn't do it. Yeah. They didn't do this purposely, no. we don't believe. No. But anyways, what did happen, which was really sad, it was that over 6,000 sheep were killed. Either they were um, killed directly from the agent, whatever that is, and we believe it was VX, or they were killed, they had to be killed afterwards because they became injured and crippled and they couldn't use the meat or the, or the fur, I mean the, uh, the sheep, wolf. the wool, uh, yeah. the other yeah, fur, the sheep, <laughs> the wool. And they, so they had to destroy about 60, 6,200 uh, sheep lost their lives. Yeah. So it was really, really sad. And, and there's no telling the, the, the people there because it was in an area called Skull Valley where, um, uh, the go shoot Indians live, and I think they were affected by it as well. They they could have been, yeah. There was there was yeah. talk. There was some lawsuits going on, and we didn't get too deep into that. Oh, they didn't uh, get a lot of money either. That's the sad thing. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, and a lot of the a lot of the people that had the sheep were not just the Native Americans. They were also uh, other residents you know, of Utah that uh, you know did get some compensation for the sheep uh, loss. Um, Anyways, uh, there was in, in 1994, there was a, a big uh, US General Accounting Office uh, a report about what happened. Um, and there were some really major concerns uh, about the, the open air testing that they did, which of course, some of that open air testing or accident basically created this, this uh, situation with the sheep. Uh, but the, the uh, the General Accounting Office is pretty concerned about that because it was thousands, they think, of these open air testing. And then it was there was one more incident, kind of uh, an anthrax incident that happened in 2015 that the base sent out an live anthrax by accident again to places around the country, which turned out to be a huge story because a lot of them were delivered by UPS, I mean UPS, and and by uh, FedEx and by the United States Postal Service. So here is anthrax that's going through the mail service. Uh, it's live. It's packaged probably properly, but who knows what could have happened? Nothing did. We don't believe. So, anyways, they've had some major issues there, uh, which is sad. Uh, but it's it's a it's a pretty incredible place from a standpoint of what they do there, um, etc. So let me let me go on a little bit. So there was one more thing we're gonna, I was going to mention to you that I, I, uh, I learned about. At one point in the, in the 20, when we were there, Rainbow and I were there, we'll talk about this a little bit later, but they, they actually had a very experimental vehicle there. It was called a, a Ultra Leap which That's has a really, way. really interesting, right. It has a really interesting name. It's, it's an ultra long endurance aircraft platform. And they had it on the base there. It was really top, top, top secret. And it's very possible, and we'll talk about this, 
that Rainbow and I may have gotten a picture of it. Um, it, it was just the ray part, not what it looks like. Right, right. Just just either it passing through something, yeah. etc. That's crazy. Yeah, it was it was extremely curious. We have a picture. We're going to try to show it to you. Uh, it's kind of I, a crappy picture. I yeah, know. it's not a great picture, but uh, unfortunately, we we will post on on uh, 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 True Secret, Secret Forum. We'll actually post uh, several pictures on there. You can really see much better on there, yeah. and and you can go there and see those. Uh, but we and, will and talk we about. And give permission it. if you want to borrow them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So so we'll we'll go over that in a little bit. So anyways. And then lastly, I just wanted to go over, uh, I, I did have a, a friend and a, and a gentleman that worked with me that actually worked for me uh, when I worked in Utah in uh, Salt Lake City. And he was a friend, he was in the military and he worked at, uh, at the, um, I think it was called the Michael Air Base, but he was very familiar with the Dugaway Proving Grounds, part of the chemical uh, organization there. And so he, when we were talking about that incident where the, the uh, VX got out, or at least they thought it did, what he told me is he found out later on that in the, in the area, in the lab that they, they do the VX, uh, what happened was, and I thought it was pretty fascinating, it seemed to make some sense. The way the airflow is done, the air is drawn in from the outside, and then it, it pulls the stuff out of there and goes through it, some really powerful filters before it's sent back out again. So what happened was he said that um, they had some people uh, working on the outside, maintenance crews that were working on the outside, were using some pesticide uh, to keep kill bugs or whatever around the, this facility. And what happened is some of those, apparently some of those pesticides have components very similar to VX. And when that was drawn in, the air was sucked in with those components in, it basically uh, set off the alarms. And of course they thought right away the VX had gotten out and in reality it never did. At least that's what the final conclusion was. Good for those people because VX is like unbelievable. It doesn't take much to kill you, very little actually. So anyway, so that was just the final story and it, it, seemed, to, it seemed to be correct, seemed to make sense. This gentleman also ended up after he, he was at work there on the base, he actually ended up working at a facility very close that actually destroyed all of the VX and all the other chemical products. There was a treaty that was done and I don't remember which year it was. I think it was in the nineties and it took quite a few years to destroy all the VX. And he confirmed, he said to the best of his knowledge, all the VX was destroyed and a lot of the other bad, bad chemicals were also destroyed. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping that's correct. I'm hoping it was, it was that. So anyways, so anyways, with all that said, that should give you a little bit of background about uh, the, the Proving Grounds. And then we're going to talk about, and Rainbow will start the conversation off about our experiences and our adventures and our research we got as we drove out there and, and checked the, the site out. So, Rainbow? Well, also I wanted to include in that is there's a town close by called Twilla. Mm -hmm. And we found out that there's a high rate of cancer there. And I think it's because it's located so close to a uh, dugway. And also close where they were destroying it's, the yeah, uh, it, yeah. destroying those, but that's a separate facility. And the one thing about dugway is also it goes underground. Mm -hmm. So I mean, and there's no telling how far it goes out from underground. So that makes it very interesting in that regard. But how it came up on my radar was back in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And it was around the time, I think a couple of years before I had met Michael. And I'd heard that it was a new Area 51 um, of uh, spotting UFOs. Um, there's a unique aircraft that people were seeing, a lot of unusual orbs, things flying around, high speeds just disappearing, reappearing, all that. I thought, well, gee, you know, if I ever got into that area, I'd like to go see it. Lo and behold, the two bucket lists that I had was Dugaway mm -hmm. and Skinwalker Ranch. Mm -hmm. So those, and we didn't know, I didn't know at the time I'd be living in Utah. So uh, when, when we went for Michael's job, um, these two areas for sure were the locations I wanted to search out. Now, the first trip that we took out to 
dug away. Uh, the landscape reminded me a lot of New Mexico landscape, mm -hmm. high desert. Yep. High desert. But it it really has this look of where it's 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 a, a really strange energy to it, almost like it's been scarred. Like the the landscape has has some like weird vibe to it. Um, and we noticed that there was a ranch, or a, actually a, a, a was it. It was cows, right? It was a yeah, cattle. Yeah, yeah, cattle. I think it was cows, um, and then a, a ranch that's right by the road, actually. Yeah, real close. You and just... then you go through the the reservation because it's not very big. It's a small reservation. It's I don't I how many miles I don't I don't remember. I think it's a um, 112,000 acres, and it's just over 29 miles of land, and it's a very small reservation. Yeah, as reservations go, that's tiny. And so um, when we first went, uh, we, we saw the landscape. It was pretty interesting, kind of wanted to get the vibe. So that's what we usually do. We'll go to a location. And I think you should always do that if you're gonna do anything. To, if you're intrigued with something on the paranormal side, just go check it out first. Because you're, you may pick up some information while you're there. And then when you go back you're, the next time, which is what we did, Right. Then you get uh, a, a more targeted type of information and, and, and why you're back there. So when we went, um, we did go uh, to what the, the entrance of Dugaway. Mm -hmm. And then what was interesting is we saw a ward house. And so the, they had Mormon, the Mormons Mormon have a, ward a ward house, yeah. or they call it a steakhouse. Stakeout, steakhouse. Uh, I, I think I remember, both. The yeah. ward house. Yeah. It, yes, and right it was now. isolated and it was just like in the middle of nowhere and it's just like that was surprising there it was yeah there it was, was. very nice yeah. nice looking was, very... yeah very pretty building and yeah. but what was interesting is it was right next to a like, military base which just, is right. very odd you don't normally see that right now, at the entrance. Like you don't see churches around military bases but it was just this was in the middle of nowhere and then i had had for some reason and I, I don't know if it was past experience. I don't know what it was, but I thought that Michael and I could just kind of drive up and then, you know, it just felt like I'd been there before. And Michael had to constantly tell me we cannot just go through the gates. They're not going to let us. But I, I know what the, the inside looks like. I know I've been there, but I can't explain why I, I, I know this. That's very unusual. So we went around. Um, uh, a side area where there was a tall fence with all the signs that say, you know, with, you know, no photos, and then they authorize lethal force. Lethal force, yeah, yeah and yeah. all that. It was, it was a lot yeah. of those signs and a lot of scary it was every, stuff. Yeah, it yeah. was just everywhere, and you know that there, there, there's cameras, so they're looking oh, at yeah, you. And so, yeah. of course, I was, I got my phone out and I was taking pictures of the sign because I thought the sign was really intriguing. Well, that they yeah, would, yeah legal legal lie yeah, I, mean, I don't even know if we have those photos I haven't no. seen a photo like that no 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 we remember my phone broke so oh. we don't have the phones oh. that's a good thing yeah remember that's no, a good no i thing. just meant to have that sign i didn't know no we don't have a, a photo of those signs they they're very scary signs let me tell you yeah. and so we were probably parked there for a while and then michael had uh he was like i i, I opened the door and i was taking pictures a little closer which probably was stupid yeah but I just wanted, I, the signs were weird. I, you normally don't see that. I mean, I come from Albuquerque where we have Kirtland Air Force Base and they probably have that on the, the gates as well, but um, in certain areas, but anyways, it was weird. And, and I wanted to take a picture of it for an article that I wanted to write. And, and when I got opened the door and got out, Michael was really concerned because of what Dugway is all about. It's all about testing all these strange and crazy types of chemicals and who God knows stuff we probably don't even know because that's where where what places go to contract out to have things tested right it's and like proving ground sure anyways um so uh, I got back into the car and we turned around and we we went uh did full circle we went up this hill up to that's this, the highway the Lincoln highway, highway. Lincoln Lincoln highway. highway yeah and when you get to the very top uh, they have like uh, a little parking area where you can kind of look out and stuff. But as we were headed towards that direction, there was an SUV. Uh, I believe it was white, wasn't it? 
I thought it was white. Yeah, I think it was white, but the, win the, well, the, the windows, windows were all black. darkened. Yeah, they the were, windows you couldn't even, you couldn't see anybody who was in there. Right, it definitely came from the base. I mean, it came from the base right. and it came up right behind us yeah. and it followed us, Right. but it was like kind of like his tailgating. Right, and yeah, then and that's what close. they do to get your Push attention you. and basically say what you know what are you doing? Why would you be doing that? They they probably got license plate number, figured out who Michael was. And, yeah, they um, don't they won't mess with me though. Well, you know, with Monsters Inc., Michael Wazowski, the one eyed alien. <laughs> don't don't give, don't give away all the good stuff. So, anyways, um, so uh, so that was nerve. Uh, nerve-wracking in, in a way because yeah, it was uh we didn't know what they were going to do and i didn't know if they were going to try to push us off the road so they actually after they started tailgating us um and they would speed up and then ease up and then speed up and then ease up and then they just finally went around us and actually just continued on and it was just a, a scare tactic is all it was yeah we were already leaving the area i think we weren't a threat we yeah. and we really i'm sure they had watched us and basically us just getting out occasionally along yeah, the road was, yeah. and taking a few pictures i don't think they cared <laughs> but i guess we probably well, I got think more, they did care that's well, they why they did probably care. came out but no but when we get into the base area i mean we were doing pictures and stuff all the way along the way yeah, kind of yeah. we didn't get anything um yeah. so that was a, a interesting trip. We ended up having lunch in Twilla, and then we went back home. And then right after that, I just was bombarded by um, a, a very strange looking um, being that actually works there. And, and uh, I think they're underground and they told me to come back and that if Michael and I did come back, they would show us uh, kind of what they look like. And so it's not that that what the images that we got were like of orbs or vortexes or stuff like that. It was actually these beings. Uh, they're, they can show themselves in many different ways. And I actually have, uh, I drew the, the being. They're about, oh, I'd say maybe three feet tall, maybe a little shorter um um they're not anything like grays but this is this is a little guy that um and it's how's that looking yeah right there is perfect this is the little guy that um they contacted me there are a whole group of them and um they said hey if you come back we'll give you because we're always looking for evidence right and so they said well we'll give you some and um there there are guests here from what i was told and that they go they travel they, they hang out at at dugway and then they they leave to go home so um anyways it was probably uh i'm trying to think what, what was the first time we went hmm. good question i guess it was probably uh I'm thinking what, tw uh, 2013 or 14, 2014? Oh, no, 13 we met. <laughs> so oh, I well, I, okay, it was 20. <laughs> no, it was 20, I, would, I think it was probably around 2014 or 2015. Okay. But I'm not, I'm not talking about the year, I'm talking about the month. Oh. Because the second time we went, it was a little bit colder. So it had to have been around September or October. The, fir the first time? The first time, okay. yeah. And then the other one, I think it was like it February. It was after. Yeah, I think it was after. It was Christmas. after the holidays yeah, right. because it exactly. just started snowing. But right. anyways, the second time we went, they said if you just go, just and they didn't tell me where to 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 aim the camera. They said if you, wherever you take a pic, wherever you want to take a picture, we'll show ourselves. And basically, they did in almost every photograph. And um, so, I kept bugging Michael and to appease me we we went ahead and 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 went and then i said to michael well where should i where should i do my photos and michael said graham will just get out of the car and start snapping your photos and so these are just a couple of those photographs um i didn't we didn't make pictures of all of them i just wanted to do three but the one that I, I really like is one of the first ones that I took. And it kind of shows these little guys kind of in this little light anomaly. And then, then the, the little tail of rainbow colors. Now, what was interesting about 
the day. It was cloud covered. It was a little uh, past noon and the sun really wasn't coming through very well. Um, so, and you can kind of see in the picture that it's, you, you can tell it's, it's late fall. But, uh, but, and, and the, the, the one thing about these photographs is that they were low to the ground. So these, that's where these guys would be, low to the ground. So this is the first one. Is it showing? Yeah, yeah sort of. Yeah, you're gonna, again, I'm gonna put those on the, um, on the uh, Truth Seeker Forum website and I'll put it, I'll title it Dug Away yeah. Photos and just go to that and you'll look at it closely uh, because, yeah. You know, it's a little difficult to see when we printed yeah, these Yeah, I mean, we're not into... sophisticated enough to be able to plug them into the video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. but anyways, you'll, but you'll, see, you'll see them pretty good. Um, this was another one. Now, what I, I found interesting with this one is the, the, the white ball on it. And again, these were all really low to the ground. They were just like within a couple feet up off the ground. Except for this one, wasn't it? No, that, that, yeah. this is a different story. Right. So here's another one. Right. And um, you can see oh, actually, the, sorry, it's, it's the wrong way. It went, it, it's that way. It, yeah. Went. And I'm sorry, I know this is blurry. So just go to the um, Truth, our, Seeker, Truth Forum. Seeker Forum to, to get a good look at the photos because they're pretty cool. And what I like about this is you can kind of see the, um, you know, that there's two layers of something going on there before the ball. So that, that was really interesting. Um, this last photo is the photo where we were up on top of the hill on Lincoln, yeah, the Lincoln, Lincoln Highway. Highway. Right, right. And there were a group of men who were to the right and they made me extremely uncomfortable. And I told Michael I wasn't gonna get out of the car because of them. And they were all looking in this one area and it made no sense because there was nothing there. Right. And I said, I told Michael, I'm just gonna take a photograph. And so he pulled up and went around and they were kind of, you know what's really interesting is they were kind of grinning and laughing at us. And I, I, I didn't know why. And when, it, when, when you have, when there's a group of people like that grinning and laughing, it's either it's not a good reason or to um, something weird is about to happen, right. you know, or, or three, they're just all having a good time and they're just, you know, you know, ha having fun. And, and they didn't give the impression there were, it was a truck and, and, and they were kind of like looking like they were waiting for something. So this is the, the next photo that I took. This is actually the last photo that I took. Yeah, and this was, there's mountains behind it. And this is kind of way looking, up high. It's up high. We're looking down kind of in a valley area. So it, it was incredible. Actually, it's just an incredible photo. Yeah. So this is, this is what it looks like. Right. And, and so here, here again, whoops, right here, this is this area here that looks like we, we kind of, uh, and, and Rainbow will give you the name that I kind of created for it, but it looks like this thing is, so whatever it is, is going through something or coming back through it something. A, yeah, it was like a beam that went through and it was red. Right. It was completely red. There's no rainbow colors at all coming from it, which made it really interesting. So um, I did write an article in um, Paranormal Underground and, oh, I lost my spot. And Michael, tell them how you came up with the name. That's pretty cool. Well, I think after, after this, I was trying to think, I was just thinking about this photograph that we just showed you. And I just, you know, I happened to, a lot of times when I'm taking a shower, for some reason that kind of a vortex water falling type thing, seems things come through. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyways, I, uh, uh, so, I end up getting this, this name came through and it was plasma proton vehicle. Photon. Vehicle. Phot photon vehicle, I'm yeah. sorry. Photon, I didn't know the name. Photon <laughs> it, vehicle. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. So anyways, that just struck and it really made sense. It really, really, really made sense. So, so here's, uh, here's the article. I think it's actually showing up backwards. But anyways, yeah. that kind of gives you an idea uh, of it. Here's the little guys that contacted me, and then here's the article, and it's actually the August 2018. But that doesn't mean I, I wrote the article a lot later than when this happened. So sure, yeah, no, no, yeah, really. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, yes, I, I'm saying, yeah, it's yes. Right. So, um, anyways, so what you have to do when you you go out and do this, I, I think this kind of research 
is you have to go back and you have to debunk what you did. And so our third trip out there was just to debunk this to see if, if we got or the try same- try to debunk it, try to debunk it. If we got the same type of photographs and we knew that it was just a, a camera sun anomaly, but if we, but we knew that if we went out there um, and, and we, we went out and Michael's, a lot of people don't know this, he's a weather guy. He almost was gonna become a weatherman. So Michael was looking for the right uh, time. So it was the same kind of day same, when we went out and made sure that the photos were being taken the same time of day, cloud coverage, all of that stuff. But we had to wait until obviously after uh, the holidays. So it was like around January, February when we went back. Right, right. And so we went and took the photographs and I had no connection. I had no more communication with the little beings. I don't even know their names or what they're called. Um, it was almost like it, 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 nothing I had, there was no reason even to be out there outside of debunking what we had just done. And we did photos after photo, after yeah. photo. We tried and we and tried and tried, tried any and of those, tried. any yeah. of those type of photos, which we've taken, we took a lot of photos initially, got a lot of yeah. things. The ones we showed you were some of the best, of course, but we got all kinds of little, little anomalies. Mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, like Rainbow said, when we went went back, we we made the conditions as identical as we possibly could. Yeah. Did exactly the same way. Went to the same spots, and we get nothing. Basically right. zero zilch, nothing. So we felt pretty comfortable. I think, right, Rainbow? That, that yeah, uh, we got something. Yeah, especially that last photograph, uh, the one with the red going through it. I think we we really captured something there. No, no, but when we went back the third time, we didn't really get too much of anything. We oh, we didn't get anything. No, right. No, we didn't, we, didn't, get we, didn't we got great no. photos the second time around, but the third time we got nothing. And so we really felt that what happened the second time was absolutely authentic and real and genuine. And, but we were called. I mean they kept yes, Rainbow was every, called. Every day they'd say, why aren't you listening to us? And that's the one thing that I think is really important for people to understand about someone who's an empath. If you are getting communication and someone is actually trying to contact you, you have to answer. You eventually have to answer because um, that's the whole point of uh, extending yourself out there so that you can know where to go. Because in, in a way, it's kind of like um, dowsing in, in a way, because you have to kind of put your little dowsing, like little receptors out there to know where to go. And I think when things see you and they know that you, you, you're an empath and they know what you do and they'll come back, they'll, they'll come and contact you. And so that's why it's so good being with Michael because he understands that. And he knows that if I'm being driven crazy by something that'll drive him crazy until we go out there. I mean, I can go by myself, but I don't recommend that because um, you never know what's calling you. So you have to be careful. Right. And I knew that these little guys were, were fine because I actually drew the photo, I mean, drew the, the, the face, I think, before we went out the second time. So I think I, I did this um, earlier. And let's see, what, 2015 what's, there. what's the date? Yeah, yeah, I did. So, um, so definitely I, I saw what they looked like first before we went out there. And, and it was very clear how they looked. It was, and uh, this is one of the first drawings I've done where it was just like, boom, it was just like right on the money as far as if you want to know what they really look like, that's what it looks like. Um, so, uh, but what I, what one thing that um, I think was really kind of sad about that area is that whenever they do a lot of the testing and the scarring on the land, it does affect the energy of the land. So that area is kind of like a little bit depressing. Well, it's, it's sort of like a dead, it, it's, it has dead a, zone. De a dead zone to it. Yeah. And, and probably yeah. rightfully so because of they had, you know, these are, this is a place where they test things that are pretty deadly and they're bombing and they're doing all kinds of other stuff. So it's a lot of really negative type stuff. And I like she, rainbow causes scarring, which is the perfect thing. The, the way to describe it, I yeah. think so. Um, yeah, and, and how I had first, I, I wanted just to give them credit, how I first heard about it was the, on the History Channel, the UFO Hunters. They had an episode called Dugway Proving Grounds in Utah. And um, 
and I I'd heard about this from them. And then, um, and I think I'd heard about it um, from some other paranormal investigator. Um, so I'm really glad we went. Now, I wanted to go back during nighttime, but I'm gonna say this to anybody who's, who would, is thinking of going, is that just remember that with a lot of the testing going on, you kind of get the sense that you're putting your health on the line because you don't know what you're breathing in. And that's kind of what we felt is that in why Michael didn't like me going out and, and closer to the, the base because you just, you had no idea um, what, what was still lingering out around there. And you don't know really what they're doing. So I would have loved to have gone out there at night to see the UFOs and see what everybody was talking about. But that's one thing that we didn't do that I kind of regret because that's what I wanted to go see. That's, and, and you know what? I'm one of those people where I've, I've seen UFOs um, since I was a kid. So it's not so much um, a, a thrill for me to go out and see these orbs at, at night, but I just wanted to see the location and get a good feel, a good sense of what this was all about. And that's the one thing that we didn't do that I wish you would have. No, no, you're right, you're right. We should have done that. Um, so let, let me just say something. We, we had touched on it a couple of times. Uh, was that I brought up this ultra long endurance aircraft platform or leap. And, and I just happened to find an article about it today. And I just, it's stuck in my mind. And I said, you know what, Rainbow, maybe, just maybe, it's a long shot, but maybe what we took a picture of was exactly that. Mm -hmm. And that was that last picture, I think the best picture of all. And I'll put it, I'll put, when I put it on the website, I'll put a, a, a caption underneath it, I'll say leap with a question mark. And that's what that was. Uh, that's what it could have been, who knows, mm -hmm. but it seems to match the word leap because it looked like it was leaping, kind of leaping through a portal or coming back through a portal, etc. So anyways, uh, I just wanted to say that. No, it did, it did seem like that. Yeah, right, it did. Um, I think that uh, the important thing too is that since it is a reservation, you have to go with respect. Um, as I we come from New Me I come from New Mexico, so um, and I lived there twelve years. And, yes, and so I think uh, just coming from a, a reservation state, that you have to go with respect because that that land is, um, is sacred, and even though it has a sad energy to it, and it's a little it's a little scarred. Uh, that it is it is sacred ground um, and I, I think that's that really is it's an oxymoron in a way because you have sacred ground and then it, yet you have all this testing going on that is kind of anti-life where you have land where, which is sacred which is all about life and that's the craziness about the energy there it is it's it's very um, you have those two dichotomies happening and that's why it, you get this weird vibe to it. it. It sort of reminds me a little bit. It's it's completely a di kind of different situation. But I always, I always, uh, you know, I did an article years ago about Los Alamos, and it, and I always, I, I think the title of the article, and I may not have it perfect. You could actually see the article in the uh, uh, True Seeker forum, and and I put in there one of the most beautiful places in the world, and one of the most I call it evil at the time evil places because basically, as you all know, Los Alamos is basically where they made the atomic bomb. The Manhattan was Project. The Manhattan Project. Yeah. And so if you go to uh, Los Alamos and I encourage you to go there, you can go into the little town, you look at the mountains around and all the stuff around is just absolutely gorgeous. And then you, you know, you realize that they made something really kind of awful, uh, the atomic bomb there. Well, my um, uncle worked at Los Alamos Labs and he ended up dying of cancer. Yeah. from radiation so it, even even the people working there um to even to this day are affected by the different things that they're testing in these locations right right so that that was yeah. you know that's kind of another example and another kind of that feeling that so contrary having something sacred next to something not very kind of evil or, or negative or whatever anti-life yeah so they, they yeah. sometimes they those things get so close together it's incredible did you have the same feeling at Dulcie? Um, 
No, I, I don't think Dulcie, uh, Dulcie didn't feel that way. I mean, I, again, there, there is quite a diff, you know, I was in the, the city of Dulcie, little town, and then, you know, the base, it's an underground base, and it's, it's quite a bit to the north of there. Maybe the distance between there was, I didn't, I didn't really feel the same energy that I felt at Los Alamos, and I felt that dug away. And you know, it's really funny, because when I, years ago, went through Dulcie, I felt that same kind of energy oh, yeah. because to me, it's an imbalance. Whenever there's an imbalance with nature, whenever something is, um, is I call it the Frankenstein energy, whenever something's being messed with and you have that kind of energy out there, then it, it affects nature and nature has to react to it. So with years ago, when I, I was a cowgirl and I was going through Dulcie, just driving, going to different locations. Um, and then experiencing Los Alamos from the time I was a child. Uh, Los Alamos to me is probably the, the one area where they have it hidden the best. Dugway was the area where it was just, oh my God, it's like scarred, almost like what you'd imagine on Mars. It had that Mars energy to it mm -hmm. where it's just desolate and no, no life at all. And then, as I was saying about Dulcie, Dulcie had like this, this, this kind of um, dangerous kind of predatory energy that I didn't like. And it was the one area that, um, that my ex-husband Thunderbo wouldn't stop. He just said, we're not stopping here. We're not doing that. He just, he didn't like the energy of the place. And that's very sad because it's close to reservation and that's, that's, uh, and, and they have to deal with that kind of energy. So what I find very sad, I don't know if it's, it's just circumstance, but these reservations are close to all these areas where they do testing and they do strange stuff. And right, right. I gotta wonder way, about that, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know if there are many times they may be taking advantage of the the Native Americans yeah. and, and a lot of times the Native American reservation like the Navajos, those are huge reservations. And there's a lot of land out there that nothing's happening. Yeah. And so the, the military sometimes comes and grabs onto that land and they probably pay them or something. But it's, it's again, mixing this kind of good, beautiful energy with negative things going on. Mm -hmm. And it's, it is pretty sad, but it's very common, especially out in the Western part of the United States. Yeah, yeah it really is. And so, um, so Dugway in, in its own way is its own kind of, um, I don't want to say monster, but it's its own Frankenstein because of what the different things that they do out there. And I think it does affect the, uh, the different towns around it. It has to because of what they do. Um, and so I, I, I think we need to be diligent and aware of the fact that these locations, when they do testing, whatever they do, um, there's a chance that it can get out, like what Mike was talking about in the beginning of the, the video. And that's a little scary, especially for the people who are around it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it is. I think they have to be village. Village. <laughs> they have to be. What do I want to I say? That wasn't one of the problem with talking today. So, so anyway, vigilant. yeah, vil, <laughs> vigilant. Vigilant. Yes, that's what I want. Anyways, yeah, um, yeah. It's it's uh, it was a very interesting place. There's no doubt about it. We've been to many interesting places in our research, um, and uh, definitely Dugway was one of those. So yeah, yeah, it was, and it was a bucket list for me. So we went. Um, the only thing that I would say that if you're gonna go out there, be respectful, um, do the evening um, observation, which was, I wish we would have done that. Um, but who knows, maybe these, these little beings might talk to you and they might communicate with you and you might get these types of photographs too. Sure, that'd be great. Share them with us, let us know. We'd love to, we'd love to see those photos. Yeah, and anybody who has a story uh, around this location, um, feel free to, to share it with us because we want to know people who've had similar experiences. Sure. And you can send those to dimensionalwalking at gmail.com. Yes. And, uh, you know, if you, if you like us, like us on the video. And if uh, we'd love to see you subscribe. And uh, comment below too. If you yes. Want. And don't forget to go to uh, trueseekerforum.com 
and you can look at those and many other there's over 1800 articles that uh, Rainbow and I both have written and that are on there and it basically details much of our lives and what we've done um, and of course uh, we'll be talking about some of that some of those things and some of the things Rainbow's written in underground um, yeah and and please check out uh, paranormal underground right. and it's paranormalunderground.net oh yes that's true so. so if you want to go check them out um they you can subscribe um and you'll be supporting a, a large group of writers like such as myself um and there's a lot of really amazing people who do write for the magazine and chad and um cheryl wilson um, are the publisher and editor in, editor in chief. So um, just go check them out, and um, and we'll see you next time. Who's, okay. who's next? Uh, are you? Jesus, uh, probably I. Okay. I well, I'll You'll have be seeing Michael. Next. I'll see something. <laughs> I'll have something good, I'm sure. So, anyways, okay. Goodbye, everybody. Be safe. Be safe. Thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye.